Hi, Phil with Alpha Bow Hunting here. As you can see, nicer weather is here and spring is upon us. So what that means is one of two things. Preparation gets kicked into full swing in these next few months as we get ready for our upcoming hunts. And number two, Alpha Bow Hunting Challenge and Train to Hunt season is, is here. It's right around the corner. So I wanted to give you some bow hunting and archery tips to help get you prepared for the upcoming season. Okay, tip number one, release tension. One of the things that I see oftentimes with competitors is, or even bow hunters, is they set the release tension way too light. They want it like a hair trigger, like simulated if you would be like you're shooting a pistol or rifle. And with archery equipment, it's different. You're under tension, you're using uh, your muscles and your bone structure and your, your form and your posture and alignment to keep you steady. So if you have your release set on a hair trigger, you're introducing uh, muscles to, to stabilize and support and you're trying to do a fine motor movement with a, uh, a release like this one and it be, can, can become problematic. So I encourage you to adjust the tension on your release just slightly where you can at least put your finger on the trigger without having fear of it going off. Same thing on a thumb button or a hinge. If it's set so light that you're afraid to put your finger on the trigger when you're at full draw breathing, it's gonna make you more likely to punch at that trigger or shoot a shot when you're not quite ready for it. So once again, release tension, set it just a little bit slower, a little bit stiffer, so it makes you really work through that shot and, and execute a good shot every time. Don't set it so stiff that you, you're pulling off your anchor point, but again, you wanna set it somewhere in the middle to where it's not so light that you can't put your finger on the trigger, but it's not so stiff that you're coming off your anchor point. So that's tip number one. All right, tip number two, introduce the right tools into your arsenal and your tool belt to help you become more successful. Now one of those is, I, I like this right release. Uh, you know, you can use a piece of, of cord or D-loop material, but all this is really uh, meant to do is help simulate either you at full draw or as you learn a new release, you can actually hook on your release and you can focus on visually connecting the dots with how your finger is supposed to align on the trigger, actually squeezing through the shot, you know, understanding the function of your release. So many people don't connect the dots that we as humans are visual learners. Our, our, our primary sensory that, that takes over or that helps connect the dots is our eyesight. And when you're at full draw, you can't see what's going on with your release. So if you can take the time and introduce a tool like this and you can really you know see how the the head position moves see how your hand position is making sure you have a, a good flat wrist and, and and straight hand and so once you do have to put it in that position where your anchor point is uh, you're, you're ahead of the game again the other thing I really like this release this trainer for is when I'm on a backcountry style hunt or I'm away from my vehicle I don't have the ability to carry in a block target with me into the woods I take this so that way every morning I'm in my tent, I'm drinking my coffee, whatever I'm doing, I can take this out and I can execute at least on the execution part with, through, with the release, um, you know, eight or 10 or 15 good shots. So that way that shot opportunity that maybe might come about that day on an animal is not the first time I've executed a shot. So again, these, these simple training tools, I encourage you to introduce them into your, your toolkit, uh, put one in your bow case, keep one in your vehicle, whatever you need to, they're, they're so valuable. And again, from the aspect of just helping you understand and connect the dots and see things first before you actually put them into its application can be a, a huge asset. Okay, tip number three, and this one gets to be a little bit more applicable as you are in a competition or possibly in a hunt scenario. Rule number one and biggest thing you need to consider just because you draw your bow back and you hit anchor and you start looking through your pins and or whatever your, your sight application is, does not mean you have to shoot that shot. If something does not appear right, if, you're, if you have not regained control of your breath and you're moving too much, you don't have to release that shot, okay? Let down, take a couple more breaths, start over. Arch, with archery and bow hunting, accuracy is everything. So if you know that you're not stable, you're not in a, a, a good enough place within your shot sequence and shot routine to execute a clean shot, don't execute that shot. Let it down, take a couple deep breaths, start over. So with that being said, as you're starting to understand the biggest challenge with events like train to hunt, alpha bow hunting challenge, or just an increased heart rate, that adrenaline dump with an animal in front of you, is controlling your heart rate, controlling your breathing for a shot. 
as a target archer, I learned to execute to, to breathe a certain way when I would shoot, and I would big breath in, all the all my wind out, and then I would inhale part way and hold a half a breath, and then I would hold and pause my breath. So I'd actually stop breathing for a second and take the three to five seconds to finish executing that shot. For some people, that can become difficult. The one thing you got to understand is if you have breathing and you want to continue to breathe as you're shooting, that's movement. Okay, so if you want to have the, the smallest pin movement as possible, you actually have to pause your breath for, for a short time. This is harder to do when you're, again, when your heart rate's up, when your adrenaline's up. So as you're practicing for in this spring or this summer for an activity, event, or hunt, I encourage you to increase the heart rate a little bit, a little bit at a time, and see how long it takes for you to take a few deep breaths to get to where you can calm your, your breathing, pause for a second as you execute that shot. It's, it's something that be, it can become very difficult to comprehend, especially if, if you're in the mindset of the, the competitive aspect of an event, but the better you can understand yourself and your own capabilities within this realm of your breathing, the better off you're gonna be. Because I promise you, any of these events, and specifically hunting, again, accuracy is paramount. The physical penalty or the time penalty you're gonna experience for a bad shot is not worth it if you can just slow down, take an extra breath or two to get to where you can, again, you don't need to hold your breath, but at least control your breath enough to where you can steady that pin, execute your shot, and hopefully it hits the spot so that way you're in good shape. But I hope you enjoy these tips. Again, a little bit outside the box with what you might see here with uh, Wilderness Athlete, but it's all applicable. It's all in the same frame of mind for the, with the bow hunter in mind. And we just want everybody to be as successful as they can be when they head out in the woods. So good luck and we'll see you all soon.